Banggood sent me a power supply at no cost to look at, so let's open this one up and see how it works. It comes with a power cord, and this one happens to be international, and it does come with a travel adapter to get it to a North American plug. There's also some test leads here with spade connectors on one side and alligator clips on the other. And we get a user manual, but the printing is very faint. It's kind of hard to read. Probably don't need it anyway, so I'll lay that aside. And the unit itself. Model number NPS3010W. So it's 30 volts, 10 amps, and 300 watts capable. It can run on AC 115 or 230 volts. And we should get this film off of the display. The output terminals are banana jacks, and you can also just unscrew the terminals and put wires. The power switch is a mechanical, physical on-off, so we have coarse and fine current and voltage knobs. And on the back, a standard IEC 320 AC receptacle, which is fused. And I like this vent. It appears to be on both sides, and it's up near the front where the fan is on the back, so that gives a good airflow. And the case is solid metal, that's good. So let's take a look inside and see what's going on there. And looking inside, that's a nice clean setup. Again, solid metal chassis, plastic front area. So a nice little PCB and a big metal heat sink. A couple of current shunts some semiconductor devices with thermal compound on the heatsink, Cheng and Cheng X electrolytic capacitors. Everything here looks nice and neat. We have all kinds of inductors, transformers. We have a brushless DC fan for cooling, 12 volt, 200 milliamp, and a ground terminal going to this ring terminal attached to the circuit board and the chassis with that screw point there. So let's take a look at the fuse in this AC receptacle. And if we look at the datasheet for one of these receptacles, the fuse is connected to the line hot side, 3 amps, 250 volts. So doing a little continuity check, the AC ground is connected to the chassis, we get continuity. And probing for where the line hot wire is going on the AC receptacle, it does go to the power switch. So the hot side is fused, and that is the side we're switching on and off. The output terminals have these crimped ring terminals on the output binding posts with heavy gauge looking wiring, and those look to be soldered directly to the power supply circuit board. Now the black one there looks kind of a bit of a big blob, but all the other terminals look to be soldered pretty well. I'm not going to take this off of the heatsink, just trying to glance for now. And looking on the control part of the PCB, there's an IC TL494 pulse width modulation control circuit. So this is for PWM power control circuitry, including power supplies. So with this put back together, before I plug it in, I am set for 115 volts for North America. I wanted to check something. Is the ground terminal here grounded to the chassis or is this floating? So I put one probe on the negative output and it is not connected to the chassis. It's not connected to line neutral or ground. And just to make sure we don't have some positive ground system. Likewise, the positive output is not connected anywhere. And first things first, a voltmeter right on these test leads. Start with voltage on minimum, current on minimum, power it up. And we start out in constant current mode because we have no current enabled. Turn that up a bit and we go into regular constant voltage mode. Now, let's see, 
just to compare against the meter, we have 3.4 volts and 3.39. If I bring that up, let's just go 17.3 and 17.3. I have to turn the fine all the way up as well, and then I get 31.5 and 31.5. So now I've got the coarse and fine up on maximum for voltage and current. When I short this, I should be able to get my full 10 amps, 10.1 amps, 6 watts, and it dropped to 0.6 volts, of course, because I'm short-circuiting it, and it's in constant current mode. But I was hoping for a spark. Let me try again. Oh, fireworks. Here I have a 6 ohm, 100 watt power resistor as a test load. And the most current I can get if I go up to 30 volts would therefore be 5 amps. And I've got a current meter in series just to compare against what the power supply is showing. So right now I've adjusted the current somewhere a couple of amps. And as I increase the voltage, right now it's 900 milliamps on both meters. But when I continue increasing the voltage and drawing more and more current, it goes into constant current mode. It looks like I was set for one amp. So 1.05 and 1.05 or 6. And I can keep trying to increase voltage, but being in constant current, we can't get any more. So if I go back down in voltage, I'm just going to put the current to the maximum and again increase the voltage. And now I should be able to get up to the 5 amps that this load resistor can give. And when I go up to 31.5 volts, I get 4.93 or 4.96 amps. So I'll turn that down because it's starting to smoke. And I had to turn this off because at 5 amps, 6 ohms, it was actually 150 watts. So I can only do that short term. And while I wait for that to cool down, I want to try measuring ripple and noise. So I have this scope probe and I'm not going to use the long ground clip. I switched over to an 8 ohm load resistor so that I'm starting with it cooled down. The scope is set to peak detection for the acquisition mode. So as I hold the probe just to make sure it's in place with no output voltage or current, on the scope it's around 90 millivolts peak to peak for the noise and ripple AC measurement. And I'm using the probe in 10 times mode because in 1 times mode the data sheet for this probe says it can only do a bandwidth of 6 megahertz. And noise measurements like this are typically 20 megahertz, so the probe can do 250 megahertz bandwidth in 10 times. So as I increase the voltage and current, I'm going to do it quickly so I don't overheat the resistor. At 8 volts and 0.98 or 97 amps, I'm getting around 85 to 100 millivolts ripple and noise. If I go all the way up, 3.8 amps, 31 and a half volts, still 86, 90 something millivolts peak to peak. And as I turn it back down with no load again, we're back to around 85 to 90 millivolts peak to peak. And we can see as we increase the load, the waveform jumps as we're increasing and then it settles back down and we get a lot more noise on there. But it seems it is around the 100 millivolt peak to peak area all the way up to a couple of amps that I'm capable of measuring with right now. So that looks generally okay. And if I needed something that really has a more stable output voltage, I would use the supply to feed a linear regulator so it smooths it out a lot more. And just for comparison with this longer ground lead on, instead of 85 to 90 something millivolts peak to peak with no output, now I'm getting like over 100 up to 120 something, up to 140 something millivolts peak to peak. Back into DC coupling. Here's something I wanted to try. So I'm set for 3.3 volts out, and with my 8 ohm load resistor, I'm getting 0.39 amps. So right now on the scope, average voltage is 3.3 volts. But when I power on, so I'll let that drain out, re-trigger the scope, I'm set for one shot mode. When I turn this on, what kind of overshoot do I get? 
So there's our turn on profile. We get a little bit of jitter. Then it ramps up toward our 3.3, but it overshoots a bit, does a little more jitter, and then goes into its normal noise and ripple. So I put on a new measurement for the voltage maximum and it's telling me 3.96 is where it got up to here. I'll do it again, a little bit zoomed in. Again, 3.96 is the max before it goes to its 3.3. Now if I increase the voltage, let's just go just over 13 volts. I will turn this off, turn it on. So with 13.2 volts, our maximum was 14 volts, so that's an overshoot of 0.8 volts. Trigger again, 13.2 volts, and I get a max 13.7. Just something to keep in mind, power supplies often do this, so if you're going to be hooking up to something voltage sensitive, you might want to just have the supply on so it's stabilized at your output voltage and then connect power with a jumper or something so you don't get this power on noise and overshoot characteristic. So I turn this to maximum output voltage and I'll turn it on. So our 31.5, we get a maximum 32.2. So it looks like our output voltage always has a slight overshoot less than a volt higher than what we've set for before it stabilizes. So that's not too unusual for a power supply like this being turned on. Overall, I'm impressed with this little power supply's performance, especially considering its price. So it looks like now when I need something that can go up to 10 amps, I'm going to have a nice little unit on hand. And if I need a cleaner supply, I can still use this one and just use a linear regulator to clean that up. Not a big deal. Thanks to Banggood for sending me a power supply at no cost to review. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.